thank you for taking the time to watch tonight's Bible study, and I hope that you will be blessed by it. This is the second lesson in this abbreviated study of spiritual gifts. Knowing what our spiritual gifts are and then putting them to use in service and ministry is one of the many ways that the church accomplishes the mission that it's been given. Last week, I gave this definition of a spiritual gift. A spiritual gift is an extraordinary ability given by God to every Christian for the purpose of building up the church, which is the body of Christ, to the honor of God. And some of the main lessons from last week were, one, there are many different kinds of spiritual gifts. Two, spiritual gifts are to be used primarily for the common good. Spiritual gifts are other-focused instead of self-focused. Third, spiritual gifts are given to us by God. They are not something we pick and choose. And fourth, within each congregation, God provides all the spiritual gifts that a church needs for ministry in that local setting. And if you want to find out a little more information about those points, I encourage you to watch the video recording from last week, our first lesson. So let's continue our study tonight. My first point sort of piggybacks on that final point from last week. If God provides all the spiritual gifts that a church needs for ministry in the local setting, then that means that your spiritual gifts are essential to the local church. Our focus scripture passage tonight is 1 Corinthians 12, verses 11 through 22. In this passage, the Apostle Paul continues to write about spiritual gifts, and starting in verse 11, we find these words. But it is the one and same Spirit who produces all these gifts and distributes them as the Spirit wills. The body is one, even though it has many parts. All the parts, many though they are, comprise a single body. And so it is with Christ. It, is, it was by one Spirit that all of us, whether we are Jews or Greeks, slaves or citizens, were baptized into one body. All of us have been given to drink of the one spirit. And that body is not one part, but many. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, does that make it any less a part of the body? If the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body. Would that make it any less a part of the body? If the body were all I, what would happen to our hearing? If it were all ear, what would happen to our sense of smell? Instead of that, God put all the different parts into one body on purpose. If all the parts were alike, where would the body be? They are indeed many different members of one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you, any more than the head can say to the feet, I do not need you. And even those members of the body which seem less important are in fact indi indispensable. I love that last word, even though I stumbled on it, indispensable. What Paul is saying is that all the spiritual gifts in the local church are essential. And that means, of course, that your spiritual gifts are essential 
or to use the apostles' words, your spiritual gifts are indispensable. You know, sometimes people think that the spiritual gifts that get all the attention are the more are more important than those behind the scenes. Or they think that the spiritual gifts used in a worship service are more important than the gifts that are primarily used outside the worship service. And nothing could be further from the truth. I've said it before. And I'm going to say it again. It takes the same working of the spirit to change a diaper in a nursery as it does to teach. It takes the same working of the spirit to set up the sanctuary for worship, create bulletins, and to make sure the buildings and grounds are in good order as it does to preach. If you don't believe me, Let's have a Sunday where nothing is set up, no bulletins are prepared, and the building and grounds are not taken care of, and just see how far we get in having a good service. Everyone will either be distracted or just plain out angry about the behind the scenes things not getting done, that there's hardly a spirit present to draw us into the presence of God in worship. There are no unimportant spiritual gifts. They are created and distributed by the Spirit so that all ministry needs are met and everyone has a necessary and indispensable role in that ministry. And another aspect to this point that all spiritual gifts are essential is that when everyone in a local church knows what their spiritual gifts are and how to use them, then that church will be in a position to be all that God intends for them to be in that local setting. It will allow that local church to better carry out what it means to live out the mission of Christ in that local setting. And I'll speak a little bit about Spirit of the Cross. If we can get everyone at Spirit of the Cross to know what their spiritual gifts are, and that's an exciting journey to take. If we can get everybody to know what their spiritual gifts are and then know how to use them, Spirit of the Cross will then be all that it can be. And I believe that there are current ministries that can be strengthened and new ministries just waiting to happen as members of Spirit of the Cross discover and exercise their spiritual gifts. Now, my last point tonight is that spiritual gifts are a means to efficient and joyful service. When the right person is doing the right thing at the right time, time, our service is efficient and I believe joyful. I think one of the reasons people lose their joy in service and ministry is they may be having to do something that they're not gifted to do. And the best way to explain this in Alabama is to explain it in football terms. Now, football is just part and parcel of life in Alabama. We all know that. And because it is such a part of the culture, even if you're not a fan of the game, I think this example will make sense. In the game of football, as you know, that different players are gifted in different ways. And depending on how they are gifted, by and large determines what position they're going to play in the game or what their service to the team will be. Now, let's say that you have a football player that is 6'4 and weighs 375 pounds. If you put that particular player way out on the line to be a receiver, and that means they have to sprint every play 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35 yards, every single play. You're 6'4 and 375 pounds. 
I'm going to ask you how long you're going to be on that team. You're going to be miserable at it. Just like if you have a player that is 6'4 and maybe 190 pounds, they're thin, they're slim, they're fast. If you put that player there on the offensive line and they have to block and tackle players that are 6'4 and 375 pounds every single play, guess how much joy they're going to have in the football game. And so I, I hope you can see what I'm talking about. The, the way that a football player enjoys the game and is efficient is when they are playing the position that they are gifted to do. And I hope that helps to explain why I say spiritual gifts are a means to efficient and joyful service. When the right person is doing the right thing at the right time, our service is efficient and I believe joyful. Now, are there times when something needs to be done and somebody has to do it spiritually gifted or not? Sure, it happens all the time, but that isn't how it is supposed to be. Our service and ministry should be a blessing, it should be efficient, and it should be joyful. And that will most likely happen when one knows what their spiritual gifts are and have a willingness to use those gifts for the common good of the church community. In other words, you, are, you will be doing what you are wired to do, what you have been gifted to do. I hope tonight's two points, your spiritual gifts are essential to the local church, and two, spiritual gifts are a means to efficient and joyful service, once again helps affirm God's love in your life. You are a valuable, indispensable part of the body of Christ. God believes in you and has equipped you with talents abilities, and spiritual gifts to bless others and to give witness to the kingdom of God in our local setting. So let that truth alone uplift you today. You are important to God's work in the world. You are important to God's work at Spirit of the Cross. And we want to be a place where you and your spiritual gifts are affirmed and celebrated.